Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, we're going to do some work out of the textbook in a moment, but I've got this video here to help you and explain a few things to you before we start. So I've got my uh, pack of cards here and we want to talk about the decimal system and uh, I've just created a random number really. Um, I'm going to show you those cards and first thing I want you to do is on your bit of paper just create as many different numbers as you can with those four cards. Now just just notice in uh, the decimal system we use the digits 0 through to 9 but that card's a 10 so I had to use a my special version of Hollywood tape here and um, cover the 1 to make that a 0. So Let's use that as a zero. That's a flaw in my system of random cards to generate numbers. Um, but the tape has helped us out there. So let's get started. Well, what do I want to do? I don't want to do them all because I'm looking at this. We've got four digits to work with. Whatever number we put in the first place, then we've only got three cards to choose from. And then we only have two cards to choose from and then we've got nothing to choose from so we've got to put the last card there. So if we multiply this through we've got 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24 times 1 is still just 24. So there's 24 different combinations out there and probably the smallest number is, is an interesting one. So I'm going to put the 0 first, the 2 and then the 7 and the 9. Okay, so something here, these are in an ascending order to create the smallest number. Now, they, what does this represent? There's a reason why I put uh, the 0 in there. This is called a leading 0. And sometimes they're important and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're something we think about consciously and sometimes we, we're quite ready to ignore it because we might read this as 279. We're, we're not taking any notice that uh, the zero there is actually telling us that there are zero times 1,000. That's holding some uh, value in the thousands column telling us there's nothing there. So if we looked at the largest digit that we, our uh, largest number that we could make, um, we would start with the highest digit and do exactly the opposite. So we've put those in descending order. Order to create that largest um, number. Okay, and again, just look where the zero is. The zero is here telling us that it's there's no uh, ones or no units. So that's holding value and telling us something. Okay, I have four, essentially four blank boxes and we're putting the numbers in, but do, I'm wondering how many of us actually stopped to think about that was uh, two thousands, zero tens, and uh, sorry, zero hundreds, nine lots of ten, and seven lots of one. So we just need to stop and we create our numbers from left to right. But what I'm going to draw next, I'm going to put a decimal place here and I'm going to work right to left. So Hopefully this is not too confusing and because we're dealing with whole numbers I think we need a separate video where we explain how the uh, place value works after the decimal place. So let's just stick um, with what happens immediately to the left of the decimal place. So um, here's the units column. And then I'm going to put a bit of a line here and then we have the tens column and 
then the hundreds, and the thousands. And I'm not going to draw anymore, but the next column will be the tens of thousands and the hundreds. So if the seven occupies the unit's position, we would write that as seven times one. If this is in the tens column, the nine, nine times 10 is 90. Add them together, you got 97. Now we had zero hundreds here, but technically what we could write is uh, zero times 100. Okay, and in the thousands we had two times a thousand and add those together and we create a number. We'll talk more about the expanded form of the number in a moment. But I'm here to explain why we call it the base 10 system and I want you to really concentrate on this one. So um, we're comfortable writing 10 as 10. All right. We're not so comfortable seeing this as 10 to the power of one. Okay, we're comfortable writing a hundred, but we not, might not be comfortable seeing this as 10 to the power of two. Okay, and similar sort of thing here. This is 10 to the power of three. Now, why do we write it like this? Look here, there's one zero. And so we put a little index of one. There's two zeros there and three zeros there. So it's no surprise I didn't write this, but whatever, whatever we have times 10,000, follow the pattern, there's four zeros here. So this is going to be 10 to the power of four. So this is how we create our base system. And this is probably the trickiest one, okay? This is 10 to the power of zero. Now, we haven't learnt this, so I'm going to tell you this, and I'm just going to write it like this. There's a law, index law, that says any uh, base numeral raised to the power of zero is equal to one, okay? So we can even write this, just to, just to point this out and further demonstrate this, we can write this as seven times 10 to the power of zero, apply our index law, and that turns into one, so seven times one, is what we've got up here and the way we normally think about things. So this uh, hopefully demonstrates to you where the base 10 system comes from and this is how it works. So um, there's a pattern that you can follow and it's quite easy to see how it works with the zeros. So um, I sort of think if you need to rewind that and listen to that explanation again, it would be good to do that. The next little thing that we need to do, so I'm just creating a number and this, as you'll see in the textbook, we're going to call the basic numeral. Okay, and this is just a number. We know it's a number. And we're going to write it in expanded form. Some of your instructions are asking you to write this out in expanded form. And what does that mean? We just write the, the basic numeral out. And then we think about the positions that, that those digits are holding um, in terms of their place value. So we've got two times 1000 here plus uh, yeah you can write this if you want I, I think we might do a few that's in the hundreds column and the zero in there um, and then we've got seven times ten plus nine times one so that's the expanded form here this is where we've expanded it out and that's an important skill for you to um, practice and some of the questions that were set it seems so simple but um, this will be useful later on I can guarantee you. The sign that when we're comparing numbers the first one that's of value to us is the equal sign so let's write out the equal sign and 
Um, what does that actually mean? We just might write equals sine. And the way I, I'm going to use a little picture here because I think of this as a set of balances where um, if the balance is level, both sides have the same. Okay, so just using some of the some of the cards that we've got there. Uh, let's do 27 equals 20 plus 7. 20 tens plus 7 units. Both sides are equal, the balances will uh, uh, be level. Okay. Um, the next sign that's really important is not equals. How easy was it to just put a line through the um, equal sign and say this is not equal to we might be comparing some statement okay we might have I don't know let's use these numbers we might have 97 uh, and we're asked is that equal to um, 90 plus 7 plus 2 now, on the left hand side, and I'm just going to shorten that to LHS, uh, we've got 97. On the right hand side here, if we add all these up, we've got 99. So, on the right hand side, this is not equal. And if these were 97 grams on our scale, uh, the side with 99 would pull the scale down a little bit more and they would not be the same and we would understand that okay so those signs are really important and often it's it's the case where we might be given a statement and we're, we've been asked to check if this is equal and it's so simple if, if it's not equal to, if the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side we can come in here and put a nice mark through that equal sign to say that it's not equal. The next symbol is, uh, I'll draw this out a little bit bigger. I've got two wonky equal signs here. Now, what that means is uh, approximately, prox equal so what we're saying there and this is a way I uh, understand this is this is my best guess and it's quite valid to use this sign when you're estimating something um, and when you're estimating something we're trying to be within plus or minus 10% of the actual answer so uh, another symbol that I see in your textbook that I don't use, but it's there, is this symbol here. That means the same thing, approximately equal to. These are inequality signs, okay? They're saying uh, one number is greater than the other, in this case here. Um, this is our greater than sign. And this sign here is our less than sign. Now, to give you some examples, uh, I think it's often good to draw a number line. If we're, we're thinking about numbers, and let's just pop in zero here, Let's think about some simple cases here. Let's make this 5 and let's make this 7. Alright, so we can write a statement like 7 is greater than 5 because 7 appears um, further to the right or, and is larger than uh, 5. So that's where we would use that sign. 
uh, less than we could again use a number line to help help us think about uh, what's going on here we'll put zero in here we might I don't know let's change the numbers let's make that six and let's make this one nine okay and we might say make create a statement uh, that's true six is less than nine okay so six appears on the number line to the left of nine and, and that's a good way to interpret that sign the final set of symbols that I want to talk about are inequality signs as well but watch what I do here and, and look carefully in your um, book for these symbols because they have this extra line underneath the symbol and we're kind of lazy in mathematics um, if we were um, computer programming we would use two symbols to represent uh, what's going on here and we have to because there's as far as I know there's no symbol combined symbol for this so we use uh, these things here when we're um, writing some programming code or something um, what we see in the book is a combination of these symbols so what does that actually mean uh, greater than or equal to and in this case uh, same thing again less than or equal to now here's the interesting part We've used the, sim, uh, the word or. So what you need to note here, and write this in your book for me please, is that we uh, only have to meet one of these conditions for, for a statement to be true. You only need to meet one condition for statement to be true that's important because uh, you've got two possibilities here the number can be greater than or it can be equal to it could be less than or it could be equal to so take real care when you see these symbols and these are real thinking thinking uh, moments where you need to make a decision and the important thing to understand is only one of those things needs to be true um, to make the, the whole statement true so 